a week of heavy rain and unfavorable weather at Starbase forced SpaceX to cancel all scheduled Starship pre-launch tests of the past week. Meanwhile, Starship teams took this opportunity to upgrade the launch site in preparation for the impending 33-engine static fire test. Let's take a look at those recent Starbase launch site upgrades, as well as the changes that SpaceX has made to Starship 24 lately. When the rain cleared on Wednesday, LabPadre cameras noticed a new tent set up close to the Starship orbital launch tower. The tent was erected to assist with the launch pad and tower upgrades. The orbital launch pad sustained minor damages during the 14-engine Booster 7 static fire test on November 14. The test witnessed the concrete beneath the orbital launch mount blasting off and raining down due to the intense heat and pressure from the engine exhaust. SpaceX is currently in the process of reinforcing the concrete to prevent damage during future tests and launches. The company is using highly resistant and long-lasting Fondag concrete to protect the floor beneath the pad from the engine exhaust. It is a dry mixed concrete specially designed for aggressive environments such as high temperatures, repeated thermal shocks, abrasion, erosion, mechanical impact, chemical corrosion, etc. Fondag is 7 to 10 times more durable than normal Portland cement concrete and is exceptionally stable at temperatures ranging from minus 180 degrees centigrade to plus 1110 degrees centigrade. Furthermore, Fondag concrete can be put back into service 6 to 8 hours after casting, thanks to its quick drying and rapid hardening properties. So even if the pad sustains damage during future testing, SpaceX may easily fix it and resume the testing. Work is also being done to repair the orbital launch mount, whose plumbing was roasted during the 14-engine test. Teams are currently in the process of installing shields that will fully cover the plumbing to protect it during future tests. Installation of cladding over the launch tower to shield the plumbing, electronics, and other sensitive components from Raptor engines is progressing. Gaps can be seen between each cladding, most likely to compensate for the thermal expansion that will occur due to the intense heat during static fire tests and launches. Starship Gazer recently spotted fireballs dropped by drones around the launch site to shield the area from fire risks during static fire tests. In just 3 to 10 seconds after contact with the flame, the pyrotechnic capsule located inside the fireballs gets activated, resulting in an immediate burst of fire extinguishing powder that will push the oxygen out of the fire zone, extinguishing the fire instantly. An extinguishing agent will then create a film on the burning material, breaking the combustion phenomenon. These 1.5 kg balls, which are significantly more sophisticated than conventional fire extinguishers, will automatically shield the launch pad area from fires similar to the one that broke out during the Starship 24 static fire test on September 8. In the previous episode, I mistook that the scaffolding placed around Starship 24 was for building a flame diverter, but now it's revealed that SpaceX actually put up the scaffolding to remove the thermal protection system tiles from the ship. As of November 24, three layers of tiles have been removed from the aft section of the ship, and the tiles above those layers have been removed in a strange pattern. After removing the tiles, teams added additional reinforcement to the joints of the ship's stainless steel rings. Perhaps SpaceX has determined that the spacecraft needs strengthening at various locations, based on recent test data. More tiles may be removed in the coming days, and altogether these adjustments will further delay the orbital test flight. A recent close-up shot from RGV aerial photography shows damaged tiles under Ship 24's forward flaps. This happened during the full stack attempt on October 11. SpaceX aborted the stacking attempt that day when the tower arms could not reach close enough to connect to the lifting pins under the ship's forward flaps. This happened because the cushioning pads installed on the arm rails were too thick to fit with the lifting pins. The pads are designed to act as shock absorbers while catching starships and boosters from mid-air. SpaceX had to remove those pads from the tower arms on October 11 to continue the stacking operation. It has now been revealed that the pads crushed some of the tiles under the flaps during the failed stacking attempt on October 11. SpaceX may soon replace those tiles, probably by raising the scaffolding to its height. The Raptor Center engine was delivered to the launch site on November 18. This could be a replacement Raptor for the engine that was removed from Ship 24 on November 11. The removed engine sustained damage during a static fire test on September 8, resulting in a dent in the engine bell. The dent may have been caused by the debris ejected from under the ship during the test. Ship 24 will need to be static fired with the new engine to validate the data and approve the engine and vehicle for flight. Per the Road Closure Notice and Marine Safety Information Bulletin, rocket testing at Starbase will resume on Monday, November 28. The test on Monday will probably be a Booster 7 static fire test. At Starbase build site, Starship 25 was recently lifted off its stand for engine installation. 
The engines for installation on the ship have already been moved into the high bay, and once all six engines are fully installed, Ship 25 will be rolled out to the launch site to begin static fire testing. Now, let's discuss some of the major science and technology updates from the past week. NASA's uncrewed Artemis 1 Orion spacecraft, launched on November 16 as part of the Artemis 1 mission, is set to enter into a distant retrograde orbit around the Moon. At 12.44 p.m. UTC on November 21, while the spacecraft was in a 34-minute blackout period behind the Moon, the Orbital Maneuvering System engine performed a two-and-a-half-minute outbound powered flyby burn to accelerate the spacecraft to a velocity of more than 930 km per hour. Orion plans to perform another engine burn on November 25 at 9.52 p.m. UTC, sending it into the distant retrograde orbit, which goes as far as 432,000 km from the Earth. The burn may have already occurred by the time you watch this video. Balanced between the gravitational pulls of Earth and the Moon, the distant retrograde orbit is a highly stable orbit where little fuel is required to stay. Orion will remain in that orbit for six days to test spacecraft systems before performing two more maneuvers to exit the orbit and return to Earth on December 1. The spacecraft will re-enter Earth's atmosphere on December 11, eventually splashing down in the Pacific Ocean within the vicinity of a recovery ship. Although the Orion spacecraft is performing its tasks as expected, not all is well with the Artemis 1 mission. As of November 24, seven of the 10 CubeSats launched as secondary payloads on NASA's Artemis mission are reportedly functioning as designed, while the status of NASA's near-Earth asteroid scout and one other spacecraft are uncertain. The Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency has lost connection with its Amatanashi CubeSat, which was supposed to land on the lunar surface on November 22. JAXA tweeted on November 22 that communication with the spacecraft could not be established, and it was determined that the lunar landing maneuver operation could not be performed. NASA recently shared some of the first photos showing the Mobile launch tower and the damage it sustained during the Artemis 1 launch that produced temperatures of more than 1,600 degrees Celsius. In addition to new scorch marks on the tower and missing paint on its deck, nitrogen and helium supply lines incurred minor damage, and some large sheets of metal were left lying around. The most visually stunning damage on the mobile launcher is the elevator doors, which were entirely knocked out of place by the rocket's shock wave. Another photo shows one of the cameras on the mobile launcher being scorched by the immense heat of the solid rocket boosters, with the cables to the camera burning. At the same time, the water deluge system did a great job according to NASA, and the tailmast service umbilicals were clean inside after the launch. According to Mike Serafin, Artemis 1 mission manager, while the damage looks quite bad from the outside, teams assessing the mobile launcher structure found nothing out of place, and the pad will be ready for the crewed Artemis 2 mission in 2024. You know, we do have a, a little bit of discoloration simply from the heat of the rocket, but um, all of the interfaces uh, are, are in good shape. The uh, mobile launcher itself is, uh, it has a little bit of damage to it, but it will be ready to fly um, the uh, crewed launch on Artemis II. SpaceX launched a communications satellite into orbit on November 22 to survey air and sea traffic. A Falcon 9 carrying the Eutelsat 10B satellite lifted from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on Tuesday evening during a window that had been given a probability of just 10% to go for launch. SpaceX used an expendable version of the Falcon 9 to send the spacecraft into a high-energy supersynchronous transfer orbit. Compared to a more typical launch to an apogee below the geostationary orbit, this mission trajectory cut 10 days off the satellite's five- to six-month journey to its operational orbit. The Falcon 9 first stage, B1049, which supported 10 previous missions, was the third Falcon booster expended this year. Previously this year, SpaceX intentionally expended the Falcon Heavy's center core on the USS F-44 mission and the Falcon 9 booster during the Galaxy 31 and 32 launch. The 5,500-kilogram Eutelsat 10B satellite separated 36 minutes into the mission, and the spacecraft system's checkout was then successfully completed over a period of approximately three hours. Built by Thales Alenia Space for Eutelsat Communications, Eutelsat 10B is an all-electric satellite that will provide maritime and in-flight connectivity service across the North Atlantic Corridor, Europe, Mediterranean Basin, Middle East, Africa, Atlantic, and the Indian Ocean. The next SpaceX mission is slated for November 26, which is the 26th Dragon resupply mission for the International Space Station. CRS-26 will launch several thousand kilograms of food, water, scientific experiments, technology demonstrations, and a set of roll-out solar arrays to the space station. The mission will debut a brand new Falcon 9 booster and the third and final reusable cargo Dragon 2 spacecraft, designated C211. 
In addition to the three Cargo Dragon spacecraft, SpaceX has four Crew Dragon spacecraft, and the company plans to build a fifth and likely final Crew Dragon. The European Space Agency has chosen 17 new astronaut candidates from more than 22,500 applicants across its member states. This new 2022 class of ESA astronauts includes five career astronauts, 11 members of the Astronaut Reserve, and one astronaut with a disability. Samantha Cristoforetti, a former jet pilot from Italy, is the sole female astronaut in the ESA at the moment, but the new selection will improve the gender balance of the astronaut corps, with the addition of two additional female members. Former British Paralympic sprinter John McFall will take part in the Paristronaut Feasibility Project to develop options for the inclusion of astronauts with physical disabilities in future missions. After completing the 12-month basic training, the new astronauts will be ready to enter the next space station training phase, and once assigned to a mission, their training will be tailored to specific mission tasks. Astronauts in reserve will remain with their current employers and will receive a consultancy contract and basic support. They will start basic training in case a flight opportunity has been identified. Please check out the link in the description to learn more about these 17 new astronaut candidates. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.